Hey guys, welcome to my six month bump date. Starting to get big, starting to have some mobility stuff. And so here I am just relaxing in the rocking chair with you today to tell you all about how my pregnancy is progressing. So right now I am 26 weeks, which means that I am just about six months along. Baby's starting to get bigger. I think she's around like 14 inches long, roughly, and uh, apparently about the size of like a head of cabbage. Um, I think I am starting to be able to feel more distinct movements. Like the other day I was laying down for a nap and I could, I'm pretty sure, feel like her head here and her feet here kind of kicking and her head kind of pushing against me. And so it's really interesting to be able to uh, feel those distinct kinds of movements. It's a lot more fun. Still looking forward to um, the time where I'll be able to see like movement under my skin. <laughs> right now, um, I we're able to see some kicks uh, from the outside if you're paying attention, uh, but nothing that's like distinctive or you know weird or alien looking, which is always a lot of fun. Now that we're past that 24 week mark, that's considered like viability. There's, um, I feel like that that number is probably going to change. It's sort of a traditional number being used as like your baby's viable past this point, but babies have survived all the way down to like 20 weeks, I think at this point, or maybe even a little bit earlier. Um, but it's still good to know that like we're, we're getting every single day, we're getting a healthier, healthier baby so that if something were to go terribly wrong and I went into early labor, she would be okay. I haven't been sure about this milestone come like the last few months I've been hearing conflicting things but it sounds like the baby can definitely hear us talking now and I think I may have been able to discern a little bit of movement in response to sound when like my daughter says something um, it's a little hard to tell and it's probably just wishful thinking on my part but I think it's really cool that they're able to interact a little bit I have gained 18 pounds since the beginning of the pregnancy so far um, early on I was concerned that I didn't have enough weight gain and now I'm actually near the top of like my healthy range which is fine I'm not concerned really about going over it because I've always been like underweight and so being overweight is not gonna be an issue while I'm pregnant I don't think um, and so yeah I'm just I'm not worried about it uh, but that's where I am it feels good to like be it, it feels good to see those numbers increase because I know that it means that the baby is healthy uh, cravings like sweet fruit candy uh, I got a bag of Skittles from the grocery store like two weeks ago and then I finished the entire bag over the course of the week like a big one and then they were out the next week so this whole week I've been just wishing that I had some Skittles to chew on <laughs> uh, but they're in this week's order, so by the time this video goes out, I should have them back. Uh, as for symptoms, I've been having a really runny nose lately, and I don't know if it's seasonal hay fever or pregnancy rhinitis, but in either case, it's super annoying. My nose is all red and raw right now. And at the very least, I'm so grateful that a runny nose is not a symptom of corona because otherwise I would probably be convinced that I was dying. In other news, I have started to have some irregular heartburn and reflux and I remember that from my first pregnancy as being really just annoying. Um, I haven't gotten to the Tums's candy phase of pregnancy yet but I feel like that's coming. So what we've been doing lately, um, again this update is mostly about how we're dealing with coronavirus and the pandemic and lockdown. Um, we've been opening things up a little bit. Our state is opening things up. We're moving into stage three, I guess, whatever that means. Um, there has been very little guidance as far as actual like people and houses as opposed to just businesses. Um, but we're sort of using that as an opportunity to get a little bit broader of a scope for now. So we've sent our baby back to the babysitter. Uh, I think this is her third week back. And so that is why I'm able to record in here. Um, the baby is actually there today. And so I have the house to myself, which is great for getting stuff done, both for getting stuff done at work and also for getting a little bit of nesting done. I just feel like I'm able to stay on top of keeping the house tidy when there's not a toddler here messing it up all the time. So that's really great for my self-esteem and all this. Um, I think it's it's been good that we've been branching out and seeing a couple more family members. You know, we really missed my parents, my husband's family, um, and we've you know gotten to interact with some of them a little bit. So we're doing that now. 
Uh, looking forward to when I go on maternity leave, which will be at 36 weeks, uh, we're going to lock it back down at that point. Because what's important at that point is making sure that I test negative when I go into labor at the hospital. So um, if you test positive for coronavirus in the hospital in labor and delivery, um, you have to wear a mask the entire time, like while pushing, which can be really uncomfortable. It's difficult to breathe. It can be hot and sweaty, and that's the last thing you want, um, just practically. But also, even more importantly, is they will are still recommending, I think a lot of times, taking the baby away from the mother um, for the first however long, um, and you have to exclusively pump while you're in the hospital. There's conflicting information on both sides. Feel free to have that debate in the comments if you want to, um, or if you have more questions about it. Um, I don't know what I would do if the nurses said, we're gonna take your baby away from you while you're in the hospital. Um, because, it, like I said, there is some conflicting medical advice on that, and it seems like it's just not healthy for anybody to deprive the mother and, and baby of that bonding time or, or any of it. Um, but I don't even want to come to the point of making that decision. And so we're going to start locking it down and not seeing anybody for those weeks up until delivery. So I go on maternity leave week 36. That should hopefully give us that window. Um, I don't anticipate being too early. Um, it, it is my second pregnancy, but also with my first, I never went into labor. So, and I think in a lot of ways, this is kind of like a first pregnancy. Um, and so I'm predicting that I might go late or I might be around my due date within those two weeks. Um, so as long as I go into labor after 38 weeks, um, we'll have been quarantining for two weeks beforehand. So that is good. Uh, and that is what our plan is. So anyway, until that happens and while I'm still working, uh, we're going to be just branching out a little bit conservatively. Um, you know, I might consider like going through a Starbucks drive through which is something that I haven't been brave enough to do. Um, still not brave enough to take the baby to the park. She really wants to go to the park, but uh, it just there's there's a lot of germs on that equipment. I don't know what the plans are for a second stimulus check. I've heard rumors, but also like bills don't get passed ever. But if it does, um, we're gonna take a chunk of that and splurge on all of the baby gear that I wanted <laughs> and that I posted in the video last month going through my baby registry slash wish list for number two. So my company is opening back up their office in July, but they're gonna keep me working from home because they don't wanna, you know, put me at risk with the, the pregnancy and I can do everything from home and I have been. So um, I'm gonna stay here, which is great. And it just, it gives me peace of mind just knowing that I'm not gonna have to deal with all of the stress of mask wearing and hand washing and social distancing in the office, um, that I'm gonna be able to just keep on keeping on doing a thing that I've already been doing for like three months so I know that I can do it. Um, and just knowing that I can kind of predict the future in a little way, it's like, that's the thing that has been causing me anxiety is looking forward to the future and not knowing what it's gonna be like. And so being told, you're just gonna be at home until maternity leave, that's great. Then I know, you know, and I'm just counting down the weeks. And as long as I'm at home, I feel pretty safe. Um, so that's great. Um, still, you know, getting plenty of stuff done. And um, also, like I mentioned, getting a little bit of nesting done. I have, you know, my coffee breaks here and there. I can, you know, do a little bit of tidying or my lunch break is a little bit longer because I don't have the commute. So I'm able to do some organizing around the house and I've made some good progress. And just small little projects. They don't have anything to do with the baby necessarily, but it's sort of taking the form of energy towards tidying rather than cleaning. Uh, though there are some, some areas that need to be scrubbed as well. I don't know if you can hear my stomach growling. I just ate some Doritos because I'm holding off until after this to eat lunch. Looking ahead to the future, I believe uh, as of next week I will be in my third trimester, which is crazy to me. It seems simultaneously like this pregnancy has been going on forever and that it's been really quick. Uh, but I am definitely starting to really look forward to holding the little one uh, when she, you know, comes out. I had a lot of, like, trepidation, I think, about the first time I gave birth. Just, 
knowing that it was such a stark difference between having kids and not having kids. Now we already have our daughter. And so the change is going to be having one to having two, which I think is in a lot of ways, I mean, maybe I'm going to eat these words, but I think in a lot of ways, it's a smaller step up than going from zero to one. You know, like zero to one is an infinite change, whereas one to two is just doubling. But it is interesting to see uh, how our toddler has been sort of processing the news and the, um, the anticipation. We have been watching the Daniel Tiger episodes about the new baby sister, um, and I think that those are getting through to her a little bit. Um, it's pretty common knowledge that I guess toddlers will go into a bit of a regression around the time the baby is born um, and maybe start, you know, sucking th the thumb if they had stopped or having more accidents if they're potty trained or that kind of thing. Uh, waking up overnight maybe if they didn't used to do that. Um, already, like, the baby's not even here yet and I think in a lot of ways she might still have some confusion. I think at this point she has moved on from the concept that the baby is inside my boobs, understands that she's in my tummy, but I think she might just be anthropomorph anthropomorphizing my stomach a little bit because she'll like ask me to pull up my shirt so she can see her baby. Um, and she also still sometimes will think that she has a baby in her own tummy. Um, and <laughs> the really funny thing, I've been using the excuse, oh, I'm sorry, I can't pick you up. My baby's too heavy. Um, you know, or I can't do this or that, the other thing, the baby's too heavy. Meaning, you know, I can't bend down or I can't get down on the floor or I can't pick her up right now. Um, she actually used that excuse one or two times. <laughs> Recently, she's like, uh, I think she, a crayon had rolled under the dinner table and I was like, can you go get your crayon off the, under the dinner table? And she said, no, I can't. My baby's too heavy. <laughs> my next doctor's appointment is actually next week. Um, and so that is one that I'm actually going into the office for. It's not just a phone visit. I'm going to be getting my Tdap booster, which I may have covered in the last bump date, but they give you a Tdap booster in your third trimester um, in order to pass some of that immunity onto the baby. Um, because they don't get their first Tdap until two months old, or Dtap, sorry, when you're a baby, it's a Dtap, until two months old. And so pertussis specifically is the thing that's really dangerous for newborns. But of course, obviously you don't want your infant getting tetanus either. So I have to go in for that. And then I'm also doing the one hour glucose challenge, which makes it sound like a, I don't know, some sort of exercise marathon thing. Um, it's not that exciting and it is kind of gross. You just like chug a little bottle of flat soda. It I got lemon lime last time, which is not my favorite soda flavor, but I guess it's better than flat Coke. Anyway, an hour later, they take your blood, or your blood, um, like they take a, a blood sample to test your blood sugar. And last time I passed, it was fine. It was just boring to sit around waiting for an hour. Um, and it, like I said, it doesn't taste very good and you do kind of get a little bit jittery after just cause you're sitting there, like you don't have to fast, um, but it is a lot of sugar all at once. And so you get a little bit jittery. So I'm looking forward, I have plans to hit up in and out afterwards and get a double double. And other than that, we're just trying to stay healthy as much as possible within the newest, you know, guidelines that are coming out. Um, our church is going to be reopening this Sunday or today as this video is going out and we're pretty nervous about it because we don't know what it's going to look like exactly. Um, we're getting more details, but we have decided that we're going to put it off for at least one more week, see how it goes, get some feedback from some other friends at the church and see what they think um, before deciding whether it's time to go back either as a family or maybe individually so that we're not exposing our toddler. It's a difficult decision because we've been away you know, just doing live stream masses for three months now. And uh, it's, you know, I really miss it, but also just the thought of the modifications that need to be made um, are also kind of heartbreaking. So obviously I'm not gonna stay away because of that. And because this is that window before we have to lock down again, at which point in August, September, we're not gonna be going into the church. We're gonna be doing the live streams again. Um, I think that this is an opportunity that we should take. Uh, so that's just, these are the things that we're thinking about right now, um, as well as just trying to focus on being the best parents to our toddler that we can while we still just have one and looking forward to the future of her being a big sister.
So that is everything I've got for you today. Thank you for joining me for my bump date. There's a whole playlist of pregnancy related videos up in the corner if you want to check those out as well. I've been doing bump dates every month um, and also don't forget to subscribe. I post videos twice a week so Sundays are these kinds of lifestyle and baby and pregnancy related videos and on Thursday I post planner stuff. So I will see you in the next video then. Bye! All right, you're done.